Hi. We are to Justice, card number 11, in my video responses to Gypsy Chicks Art of Tarot series based on 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock. I have taken it one step further. I go <clears throat> get my my uh, 78 weeks of study. This one I haven't I haven't written on like I have the others because I wrote so many pages. I have 10 pages of notes from all the card books. So, but this is off um, the 78 weeks of study, and we're going to hop in and get going here because I have. A love-hate relationship with eBay and I have even more decks. What I need to do is stop buying, and I know I keep saying this, and just use them. I will learn faster that way instead of ooing and eyeing over some of these because they're so awesome. It's the artwork that sucks me in. Okay. Let's see. Just to give you an idea, um, a sword pointed up. Uh, is resolve and wisdom to find inner meaning. Inner meaning. Um, Two-edged means there's a choice. Scales represent the balance of past and future. The female between two pillars uh, represents the high priestess. The red robe and posture, the magician. The purple veil represents inner wisdom. Um, the background, crown, hair, scales are yellow, and they represent mental force. All right, so... Again, this is based on the Rider Waite Smith deck. And here you see what I think is a woman, hard to tell, with the sword up and the scales. You can notice her one hand is up and one hand is down. Um, she's between two pillars with a veil, a crown. And what Gypsy Chick mentioned, which I hadn't noticed until I watched her video, was this little foot sticking out, which means that she is ready for action. So that was just a cute little thing that Gypsy had pointed out. So what I have done <clears throat> is I did them in alphabetical order just because it's easier for me. And like I said, I have 10 pages of notes from all these cards and the ones that have extra books with them. So our first one is the Archangel or no, the Angel Tarot. And here we see it's card number eight, and it's called Justice. And you see the scales, the sword, the pillars, and what does it say down here? Fair and just decisions. Do what you know is right. Stand up for your beliefs. And this is Archangel Ragul. I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly. So... That is the Angel Tarot. Next we have Aquarian. And here again you see a sword and sca the scales, the pillars, and a crown, and a throne. Now, this one says the left hand is gloved in black holding the full crumb of balance the right hand is in gray and downward pointing sword um, figures of the future show from within her bosom above each breast shows an emblem of the past cosmic justice a step beyond chance things occur as part of the plan a plan beyond our human understanding flowering wands represent the spiritual nature of justice the figure wears no blindfold awaiting each and every moment so there's a link between cause and effect. That's the Aquarian Tarot. Now we have the Archangel Power Tarot. This is one I don't like at all. Probably my least favorite card. Um, again, we have Archangel Rag Ragul um, helping restore balance. You see the pillars and the scales. And he does not have a sword. So there's no sword on this one. And this one says, fight for justice and equality, ruling, rulings made in your favor. Don't give up. Then one of my favorite decks <clears throat> is the Art of Life Tarot. And here you see a self-portrait of Vincent Van Gogh. 
And a quote from William Shakespeare that says, This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. I just love the stack. They take beautiful artwork and put it on there. Okay, and then we have a new deck that I ordered in October, or I don't know, maybe September, but it took forever to get here. It's called Beautiful Creatures Tarot. Um, and here you see we have a card called Equilibrium. This is number 11. And we have two witches that are opposites. Intolerance is not an issue. We are both different in our own right. We learn to come to terms and be fair with one another. There will come a day when you will have to accept situations and people for what and who they are. Important that you be fair and equal to yourself as well. And this is beautiful creatures. Then we have Celtic dragon. And here we see a large white dragon sitting on a rocky path with the forest close behind. Um, it's wearing a crown. It has one paw on a scepter. The other paw holds on to an unrolled scroll, which is the karmic records. White represents pure unbiased. Um, cannot move forward without dealing with consequences of past actions. The gold crown represents spiritual enlightenment. The scepter represents willpower to make changes and the forest events of every life a human has lived. I like this deck, Celtic Dragon. Then we have another new one called the Chrysalis Tarot. And here we have a number eight again. And this is Matt, the Egyptian goddess of justice, truth and order. Um, she holds creation in equilibrium to, <clears throat> to prevent a return to primeval chaos. The spread wings represent a promise of motherly love and protection. The ostrich feather represents truth. And skimet uh, represents the lioness of the sun. The lotus flower is skimet's personal symbol and protects the righteous and destroys the wicked. And this is the chrysalis. See, you can see the little lotus flower and everything down there. Okay, very pretty deck. And if you buy it off Etsy, oh my gosh, she does like cool little things. Never mind. It's a good, good deal, beautiful deck. <clears throat> uh, then we have the Circle of Life. And I've got to find out if there's a book to this because this is a fishy looking lady. And she does have a sword. She's between two pillars. She has scales. Her hands are one up and one down. She has a crown, but her eyes are closed. But see how she's like a little fishy? Yeah, circle of life. And then we have color your own. This one's a pretty one. Now this black and white uh, floor will come again on another card and I'll just um, describe what that says later. Here you see a female with a sword, scales, a crown. She's number eight also. Um, balance is all. Wields both emblems, which represents just decision to be made. Let's color your own. Obviously, this isn't the one you color. It's one that's colored for you to give you an idea. Then we have the contemplative tarot. We have a female with a sword, scales, crown, two pillars. She has one hand up, one hand down, and she's looking directly ahead. It's the contemplative tarot. I show you the backs just because some of them are just awesome. Then we have um, the Complete Arthurian. So now, because I thought this was just an update of the one I already had, I now have two Arthur decks, which is fine. I love King Arthur. Uh, here we have a female, Sovereignty, goddess of the land, bestowal of royalty lies in her gift. Only worthiest candidate can be king, truthful, compassionate, just, courageous, and loyal to the land and its people. Um, the Celtic tradition, white milk of fostering, red drink of lordship, and dark drink of forgetfulness. So that's what these colors are. It's a pretty card. All right, then we have the Crystal Visions. And this, I'm going to get the extra book. She does have one on her website, so I'll order it. But the back is so pretty. 
So pretty. Okay. And here we have a female with a sword, scales, um, and she's standing, balancing on loose rocks above the river of truth. Okay. Then we have the Da Vinci Enigma. Um, and it's called Experience. Is this one an eight? Nope, this is an 11. Okay. The female points onto a mysterious distance. Uh, boy, this is a hard color to read. Leads us to explore the truth of experience. Leonardo um, said experience was the common mother of all the sciences and arts. Truth will prevail. And that's the Da Vinci Enigma. Then we have deck 777, which helps when you see all these different symbols, like the Libra symbol and um, the Hebrew letters. It's awesome. So this is the 22 majors deck that you have, and then it talks about the chakras and, I mean, just everything you could want. Here's a rune, and then the candle. It's, it's just awesome. So it helps people like me. That's deck 777. Then we have one of my favorite decks, the efflorescent. And this is also available in black and white on Etsy, but I'm a color kind of person. So here we have a female with a crown, a scale, a sword. She has one hand up, one hand down, and she's looking directly at you. Very pretty deck. Really like it. Next one, we have some nudity, FYI. Okay, this is the fairy tarot, and here we have a number eight again. And this one's called the dryad. We have a female with a sword, scales. She has one hand up, one hand down. She has a crown and a blindfold. She's kneeling on a book of laws. The blindfold follows, um, represents her following her inner voice. She's completely naked as the truth. Opportune time to resolve arguments or legal issues. This is the fairy tarot. The Feng Shui. This one's called Justice, and it's number 11. And the only thing on here are scales. I can't tell if that's female, but we do have a yin and yang, so we have the opposites. Pretty card. I think this one has a book, too, but I don't have it yet, so I'll have to look for that. Then we have the Fredella Adventure Tarot, for those of you who have boys or are into the comic scene. Um, here we have a male. This is Patriot. He's blindfolded. He has scales and he's in a court of law. Patriot is um, the representative of UN peacekeepers. Superheroes pursue justice. And this one you can pick up very cheap on eBay, FYI. Then we have the Gilded Tarot. And Gypsy Chick has this, so if you want to know about it, go to her Art of Tarot series. Here's another one of my favorites. This is Cat Black's Golden Tarot. Love, love, love. Um, here we have an angel with scales. We have a man being um, pushed down by devils on one side. On the other side, we have small angels struggling to help the female restore the balance. And you have a staff with a gilt owl, which represents knowledge. I, I really want her other deck too, but the touchstone, but I haven't broken down and gotten that yet. Then we have the Golden Visconti, and since Gypsy Chick has talked about it, we will let her do it. Except I'm going to add um, that the first rule of chivalry was to defend that which is fair and just, which is why you see this guy up here, and that's talked about later. So this is justice, and you can see the sword and the scales and all that stuff. Okay, then we have the Grail Tarot, and here we have, it's a number 11, but it's called <clears throat> Shekinah, and I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly or not. Um, it's from the medieval tradition, represented the compassionate presence of God through the figure of the Shekinah. She chose to accompany Adam and Eve into exile from paradise. She's the helpmeet of God, wisdom personified as a woman. 
That's the Grail Tarot. If you're a history buff, that's the kind of stuff you like to like to pick up. Again, that was dirt cheap. I've, I picked up some of these sets, some of these tarot sets for under 10 bucks, so that's nice. Then we have the Handle Tarot, and this one's number 11, and here we see scales. And we have, let's see, the 11 implies a union of magician and high priestess. You see a Hebrew letter, Lamed, which means ox, good, or with. We're going to suffer consequences of actions. Then you see the rune Nid, which represents necessity. Spiritual justice doesn't deal in moral issues. Events happen because they must. Situations we cannot control or change, uh, we must learn to deal with them in the best way possible. Balance of inner and outer, necessity and free will. Um, the shape of the rune resembles a sword. The element is air, which represents thought to discover the inner truth of our lives. Justice requires contemplation on one side and action on the other. Scales balance the interaction between ourselves and the world. Kind of a creepy back. I don't, I'm not real fond of the back, but that's the handle. Okay, then we have just a cute one. Hazel Moon's Hawaiian Tarot. You have a little female here with scales. Um, justice does not seek to criticize or condemn, but rather to accept. You cannot have good without evil or light without darkness. And then we have The Hobbit again. Check out Gypsy's little tail on this. And then, okay. This one cracks me up. This is one I've wanted for a while, and I got it super cheap on eBay. This is the Housewives Tarot, and this one's called Justice, and I hope you moms out there get a little giggle. <laughs> Here we have a female. Justice is best served by a fair and impartial judgment, weighing both sides and finding proper balance, rewarding with sweets and chastising with a wooden spoon. What goes around comes around. Very cute little deck. Makes me laugh. Okay, Legacy of the Divine. Again, we have Gypsy Chick. You can go to her site. She has this deck also. Um, I am going to, the quote from the book here, though, I really liked. As humans, we remain challenged in establishing true justice. I liked that. All right, then we go to Legend the Arthurian. This one has a little bit of nudity, too. Um, this is my other Arthur deck, which I thought I was just getting an updated version of with the other one, but that's fine. Um, it's a number 11. We have a female, a sword, and a scale. The scale is basically her. She looks like, you know, a scale. Um, here we have the Lady of the Lake. She represents cosmic law. Court, um... Her cosmic law court is mightier than the king's justice. In light of past deeds, Lady of the Lake deems Arthur worthy and gives gives him Excalibur and a scabbard. So that's Legend the Arthurian. Then we have Lord of the Rings. This is number 11. And this says, the Oathbreakers of Dunharl represent the atonement of past mistakes. So when they were crossing through, um, what was it, the the passage of the dead or something, I don't remember. Anyway, these guys were brought along to atone for past mistakes. So we are responsible for the karma we incur. Responsibility level is related to knowledge. Power without control is nothing. Always act according to the dictates of your conscience. I like that. It's the Lord of the Rings. And then we have the Lost Tarot of Nostradamus. Again, we have another number eight. And here we have a monk with a sickle and a flower. The four cardinal virtues of humanity are justice, fortitude, temperance, and prudence, which is represented by the hermit. Um, the goddess Astrea, who is Greek, lived on earth during the Golden Age. But as humanity became wicked, she withdrew and went to heaven to oversee um, provision of justice for all. And it's important to pay attention when this card is drawn in a reading. 
There is a purpose. All right, then next we have the Lover's Path. Here we have Penelope. It's a number 11. Um, the lovers are Penelope and Odysseus. Odysseus, I'm not sure. Homer's the Odyssey, for those of you who are knowing how to pronounce it correctly. After the Trojan War, he tried to get home to Penelope. Suitors were after Penelope. During the 10 years, Odysseus was gone. Um, he told, she told the suitors the day the tapestry was done that you see her working on here, she's weaving the tapestry, she would choose a suitor. And what she would do was at night she would unravel it so it would never get done. But um, she was discovered, so she finished the tapestry, but then said whoever could string his crossbow, she would marry. A man in rags did and was Odysseus. Uh, justice will be done. Confident patience. Wise perspectives and fairness are all key words with this card. Yeah, 10 years of patience. That's that's impressive. Then we have the Mibberig. Can't tell if it's male or female. We do have a sword, scales, and hands, one up, one down. It's just a cute little deck. Then we have the Mystic Dreamer. This one's pretty. She's in purple. Very pretty. I know the light out here is awful. I'm sorry. Um, we have a female, number 11, scale, sword, hands up and down, and pillars. The sword pointing to the ground represents justice grounds her decisions with proper discrimination and consciousness. The pillars represent conscious and subconscious. This card represents importance of your choices. Decisions now affect our future. Rely on logic and reason to make the decision rather than emotion. It's a cool deck. And here we come to the Mythic Tarot. And we have a female sword, scales, her hands one up, one down. We have pillars, a crown, and she's seated on a throne. And you see an owl with her. The white robes represent purity. And here's where the black and white floor come in. Um, that's the mind's capacity to incorporate dark and light into an orderly and coherent design. The owl represents clarity of vision. Athena gave weapons requiring intelligence, foresight, and planning. Reflective judgment and rational thought. Battles for principle rather than passions. What's the mythic? So we have the New Age. You can see the yin and yang up there on her shoulders. Or, yeah, I think that's a her. Um, number eight, female, scales, throne, crown, hands up and down. It says justice always reveals itself whenever man forgets what differentiates right from wrong. It's the new age. And we have the new Palladini. Number 11 with a female, scales, sword, and pillars. Um, the scales of balance intimate, uh, intimate justice is not black and white. It's relative and unique to the situation and individual personalities involved. The green robe represents Venus's love and understanding over the red robe, which represents Mars, which is war and turmoil. It's a new Palladini. Then we have the Pomo Tarot. Another new one. Um, This one's called Just Desserts, and it's a number eight. We see a serpent encircling. Oops, this isn't the right one. This is uh, number eight, female blindfolded scales, hands up and down with a revolver instead of a um, the sword. So you have a stern female character, <clears throat> and it's a variation of Matt, the goddess of truth in Egypt where she measured the souls of the dead in her balance scales. Enlil, god of air and ancient Sumer, weighed good versus evil. What goes around comes around. If you make your bed, you'll sleep in it. If you sow the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind. This is a big deck, but it's pretty cool. Pomo Tarot. All right. Now this next one, I made the mistake of looking at Gypsy Chick's new deck. So I had to go buy one because it's cool. It's the artwork that is just fantastic and it's the uh, 
Prisma Visions. Okay, and this is Justice, number 11. You see a sword. You see a serpent encircling a victim, and it strikes the soft flesh. The asp is split in two as the dagger falls. Cause and effect. Sharper the bite, sharper the sword. Cool deck. And then you have the Revelations Tarot. Um, and this is one, too, that Gypsy has, so I'm not going to go into it. Well, maybe I will. I lied. Okay. This one, what I like, you have um, the parchment scrolls and, and pen. Where is it? Okay. You see the quill pen over here? You have to look really close. There's a quill pen, and in the background you see the parchment and the scrolls. And those relate to contracts and agreements or legal matters. And reverse, you see the eyes are closed, and then um, it's blind justice. The clock represents the passing of time, and no hands means there's a delay in movement of time. The chain of rings represents partnerships and commitment issues. It's kind of cool. I like that one. Purple. All right, then we have the Shadowscapes. Again, Gypsy Chick has this one. Beautiful, beautiful deck. One of my favorites. Okay. And then we go to the Ship of Fools. This is a black and white deck. Um, here you see it's a number eight with a female. We have a sword, scales, uh, one hand up and down. We have her blindfolded, and she's got a throne and a crown. The blindfold represents unbiased, impartial. Uh, the fool represents recklessly taking every dispute before a judge. Justice should be tempered with mercy. I like that very much. Then we have the spiral tarot. And we have a number 11, a female sword scales, two pillars, a veil, and a crown. And you see the goddess mat holds the scale of hearts of men weighed against their actions, which is the feather. And this one has, if you look closely, you can see all the other little symbols that are in here. It's kind of hard to see. There's like the Kabbalah thing over here. I don't know what that symbol's called. Then you've got your um, Hebrew letter, and I'm pretty sure that's the rune, but yeah, that's the spiral tarot. And then we have the wrong steampunk. I wanted the other one. I thought I was ordering the other one, but this is the steampunk tarot of wisdom. Now she talks about this, but I'm just going to let you know that this is called... Uh, the brazen head, and it's balanced with the human counterpart. They're attached. Um, so the brazen head is far-seeing truth and justice. Take personal responsibility. The challenge to be authentic and honest comes every day as you learn the value of self-knowledge. That's the steampunk tarot wisdom from the gods of the machine. And then we have Supernatural. Here you have Dean. Winchester, go Dean. All right, then the Tapestry Tarot. Eh, kind of funky looking with the eyes and I don't know, it's just... Number eight, Scale Sword. And the M must be for number eight, and I don't remember what that was. I, I should have my book out here to look. But, yep, that's the Tapestry Tarot. And then we have the Jonathan D. Tarot. Here you see the sword scales, and you have two wings. Um, and you see the face resolute, firm in conviction, no blindfold, sees all the facts. And we have Tarot of the Angels, number 11. I have sword scales, crown, and wings. Can't tell if that's male or female down there. And it says, endeavor to understand the dual truths of good and evil, passion, rationality, see a balance and opposites. 
Tarot of the Angels. And then we have the Tarot Discovery Kit, which is AKA the Enchanted Tarot. It's just, the Enchanted Tarot has, um, they're bigger cards and they're white on the back and they're, I think they have a border around this yet too. A border around the border maybe. But anyway, um, you have a female, number 11, and she has a spear, scales, her hands are one up, one down. She's not blind, so she sees all sides. The pink sky represents dawn of a new day. Justice will always prevail. The huge leaf symbolizes natural order that she's standing in. And that's the Tarot Discovery Kit. And we have the Tarot of the Elves, which is, it, it's a story tarot. So I don't, I don't really need to read the whole book and see if I really like it or not. Um, here you've got Albrecht. He loses a trial by combat. And Panel Pale uses her tarot cards for a clue and finds out that magic is needed for them to continue because there's an evil wizard fighting them. And then we have the Tarot Illuminati, another one of my absolute favorite decks. Gorgeous. Um, Gypsy Chick talks about that one, so I can skip that one. And then we can go to the Tarot of Love. All right, this is a number eight, and it's called Balance. So we have a scale and a soul bird balanced on one foot with the yin and yang symbols. And it says if our souls are in balance, our partnership will rest on a harmonious foundation rainbow of light and the lovers are balanced in the flower. You have the rainbow of light and then the lovers are up here, this little blue. I don't know if you can see it. They're all in, entwined in each other. Very happy. And then we have the Tarot of a Moon Garden. Another deck I like. I love the back of this card. It's just really cool. Um, it's a number 11 with a female sword scales and it says Tangrable Tangled undergrowth is cut away so light may find the garden path and truth flowers. Actions are governed by wisdom and awareness. Rarely need to wield the sword to punish or protect. So if you use wisdom and awareness, you rarely have to use a sword. And we have the Tarot of the Princesses. And it's a number eight with female scales, sword, throne. The scales represent wisdom. The code represents legality and the sword power to implement and enforce justice. And you could consider these, these two pillars because, you know, they're balanced there. So that's the Tarot of the Princesses. We have Tarot of the Vampires again. And Gypsy Chick talks about this one. So if you want to know about it, go see her little spiel. Then we have the unicorn tarot. It's a number 11 with a female crown, sword, scales, pillars. Um, power, strength, and unity are represented. The sword and scales represent physical justice and the unicorn pillars represent spiritual karmic justice. That's the unicorn tarot. Another deck you can find really cheap on eBay. Then we have the universal tarot of Marseille, which again, Gypsy Chick talks about. She starts she always starts hers with um, these old ones, like so the Visconti and the Marseille Tarot are always at the beginning of hers, which is cool. She starts historical and goes down. Then we have the Vampire Tarot, and this one's a number eight. And the earliest known justice card is from the 1450s by Bonifacio Bembo and has the familiar female figure with the sword and scales and a knight on horseback brandishing a sword. He was sworn to protect her. Here you see Quincy Morris, a Texan, holds a bowie knife to stab Dracula's heart and Jonathan Harker, an Englishman, holds an Indian kirk kirkry to cut off Dracula's head. You have a parody of sword scales. Both men stand in front of Dracula's castle blocking his return. So they kind of, you know, like they're the scale. And we have the Vanessa Tarot. It's a cute little deck. Um, you have a number 11, a female sword scales, and well, she's a judge. So, 
Pet Justice. Then we have the Via Tarot, which is, I don't know. This is the one that I love the back of the card. I'm not real fond of the fronts of the cards. Um, it's called the Path of Life. Oh, this one's called Adjustment. It's number eight, Adjustment. And you see a female. There's a female here and two females over here, one on each side. And she's blindfolded in the middle holding the sword. She's on the rows of Nutsack with a tall column topped by a sun disc of Tipareth. I don't know any of these things, so I'm not sure what they stand for, what they mean. Um, it's a female then you have a female figure with twin feathers of mat, a downward pointed abramelon sword, and you have a heart weight against a feather, and the heart is girt with a serpent. If you see that, there's a serpent wrapped around that heart. Okay. So the two girls keep the balance and they're the pillars. And then we have the Voyager. And this one, usually these are kind of odd, but this one actually makes some sense to me. You see a number eight on a sword. The eight symbolizes balance, and the bipartite brain symbolizes the balance of left and right. The sword and facets of diamonds represent sharp-minded. Balancing sword of justice represents the pros and cons. Be fair to all sides of yourself. The mind represents is represented by the bird, the heart is represented by the, the cup, the body by the sphere, and the spirit by the dancer's reach. That one was cool. I like this one. And then we have the witchy tarot. We have a number eight, a female scale sword, an owl. And the Wizard's Tarot. This one's a fun deck. It's really, I really like this deck. You have a female with scales, and you see the heart and feather on her scales there. And then we have an owl. We have, and it talks about Themis, the Greek goddess of justice who kept Zeus safe from his father, Kronos. She also served as the Oracle of Delphi. You see the Libra sign and the lamed ox good Hebrew sign. The quill pen stands for the Sword of Justice. The bookshelf filled with law and ethics has glass doors representing transparency and protection of law. The scrolls represent wisdom and judgment of the ages. The white owl represents clear vision and wisdom. Athena is accompanied by an owl, and owls can be used as messengers. So you could be getting a message from this card. All right, not too bad, 38 minutes, and we're done. So I will add all the information on the decks and also a link to Gypsy Chicks Art of Tarot series. So I will see you hopefully sooner than four weeks. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but like I said, I'm going through each, each of the books and writing down what it says. So bear with me. It's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm learning a lot and understanding some of these cards much better and appreciating the artwork. Have a good night.